Hey there students and welcome back to Intensive Review. In this section we are going to take a look at Standard 3.3 and we're going to begin our study of reconstruction very quickly in two parts. Now first of all we need to understand the difference between radical reconstruction, presidential reconstruction, all of that, and really what were Lincoln's goals. When we define reconstruction what is the process by which the southern states are going to be brought into the Union? Are they still states? What is their status? And who is going to implement this policy? Now, Abraham Lincoln in his second inaugural address, the war was just about over. It was pretty obvious the Union was going to win. And after Abraham Lincoln says, hey, after we have drawn for every drop of blood drawn by the lash, we've drawn another by the sword. After he says all of that stuff, he says, look, Here's the way it's going to be when the war's over, because he wants to entice the South to surrender. And he says, with malice toward none, with charity for all, with firmness in the right, as God gives us to see the right. Let us strive to finish the work we are in, to bind up the nation's wounds, to do all which may achieve and cherish a just and lasting peace among ourselves and with all nations. Now, what Abraham Lincoln is saying is, hey, I, I fought this war pretty hard. But once it's over, it's over, okay? That Abraham Lincoln wants to be a magnanimous victor. And his presidential reconstruction plan is very lenient toward the South. And when we say presidential reconstruction, we talk about uh, Lincoln and his successor, Andrew Johnson. Now we see here that they're trying to fix the Union. Abraham Lincoln is a rail splitter. Andrew Johnson is a tailor, kind of playing on their humble beginnings. And Lincoln begins his reconstruction with the 10% plan. Now I call this discount reconstruction, all right? For anybody who's ever listened to a radio in the upstate, you might have heard the commercials for Key of Greer. Heard them, right? And so it's like discount, no credit, bad credit, no problem. Key of Greer. No money down, you know, and I, I think of the 10% plan as discount reconstruction because when we think about, you know, that it's a discount. And so all that had to happen is that 10% of the people that voted in the 1860 election had to swear an oath to the United States. Now, this is a future oath to the United States. This is saying that, hey, I may have been part of the Confederacy. I may have supported the Confederacy, but from here on out, we're good. And that's fine. So Abraham Lincoln says 10% of people swear an oath to the United States. You accept emancipation. You draft a new constitution that emancipates slaves. And you're back in. That was easy. You know, we need like some kind of easy button or something like that, don't we? And so Lincoln, he had a reconstruction plan. It was very generous to the South. But then there's a guy that shows up, John Wilkes Booth, and he assassinates Lincoln. And this kind of derails presidential reconstruction a good bit. And really fuels a lot of animosity toward the South because there are a lot of people who thought that it was the South that had plotted to assassinate Abraham Lincoln. And really this guy was just some dude that thought he was helping or something like that when he really wasn't doing anything to help the South. So Andrew Johnson continues Lincoln's generous reconstruction plans. Now the thing is though that although you know, the, the South, you know, the war is over. The South is coming back into the Union. There are a lot of things that happen that really make the North resentful, okay? Because what happens here is that the South imposes the black codes. A lot of these Southern states impose black codes. Now, we're going to take a look at these things, you know, that are going on during presidential reconstruction. So, the 13th Amendment. This guide here doesn't really like go, okay, yeah, it's not really like in line with this guide. Sorry about that. Okay. So let's go ahead. If you skip, a, if you skip over a little bit, the 13th Amendment in 1865, what did the 13th Amendment do? It abolished slavery. What else did it do? Trick question. Nothing. Nothing. All right, it didn't do anything else, all right? So the thing is that the 13th Amendment didn't do anything else. And you've got, you know, sharecroppers, tenant farmers. You've got a lot of people who aren't doing very well economically. And then you've got the black codes, okay? These black codes are imposed on 
uh, you know, by these southern states. And what they do is they say that these, these freedmen and women, they may not be slaves anymore, but they're not really citizens of the United States. Remember Dred Scott, the Supreme Court decision that still was binding at the time said that African Americans could not be citizens of the United States. So what these black codes do is they, you know, you think about a code, it, you know, it locks down this population of freed men and women, so to speak. And it says that they can't carry a gun or a bowie knife. They can't be drunk in public. You can't give them alcohol. You can't, uh, they can't preach without a license or anything like that. And this is denying basic rights of citizenship to these Freedmen and women. Now, the Freedmen's Bureau is put, uh, you know, is there to try to help with adjustments, all right, which in a lot of cases, all this is is find, helping somebody find a job, which usually the job is an agricultural labor job, similar to what they would have done when they were enslaved. But to a certain extent, also providing, you know, education, health care services, that sort of thing, to a very, very small extent, but mostly trying to help reunite families and, you know, find somebody work on some plantation or something like that. Now, two reconstructions here. The Radical Republicans, okay? As far as the Radical Republicans, now we've got Presidential Reconstruction. Once again, we're jumping around this guide for some reason. I need to correlate the guide with the PowerPoint, all right? Now, Presidential Reconstruction, it's generous. My friend Hip Hughes talks about hugs and slugs. What he says is that, you know, while Lincoln and Johnson want to give the South a hug, you know, it's okay, come on back. The Radical Republicans... They want to they wanna just punch them in the face. You know, I mean, these are people who just went to war. And, of course, since the South lost, that also means they started it, right? I mean, you know, you look at Germany after World War I. You lose, you started it, and it's your fault. So then you've got the congressional or radical reconstruction that is a much harsher reconstruction plan as far as the, you know, getting back into the Union. And the goals of the radical Republicans, one, punish the South. All right, make sure that the Confederates, the former Confederates, do not rise to prominence again. And then two, protect African Americans and make sure that they have the basic rights of citizenship that were denied to them by the southern states immediately after the Civil War. All right? And what happens here is what, what are the statuses of the southern states, all right? And what the, while Abraham Lincoln said we shouldn't really worry about that, I mean, they didn't really legally secede since it's not, you know, it's not legal. The, the radical Republicans in Congress, keep in mind these are, you know, Lincoln's more of a moderate. These are people who are not really on great terms with Lincoln. But what they say is that the southern states should be treated as conquered provinces, and they need to go through a process to get back into the Union. And the Reconstruction Acts, all right, there are three things that are going on, all right? Now, military districts, conquered provinces, and remember the Reconstruction Acts, first of all, military occupation of the South. Second of all, immediate suffrage for African Americans. Third, forced ratification of the 14th Amendment. And Johnson vetoed the Reconstruction Acts, but didn't really do him much good because Congress overrode his veto by a two-thirds vote. And radical Republicans impeached President Johnson. All right, President Johnson's one of two presidents to be impeached. Remember, two presidents have been impeached, one president has resigned, and how many presidents have been removed from office? Zero. Okay, so two, one, zero. Two presidents have been impeached, one has been, one has been, one has resigned, zero have been removed. So Johnson was only one vote shy of being removed from office. Now, the 14th Amendment, just to take a quick look here as far as the 14th Amendment, bless you. Birthright citizenship, equal protection of laws, and also several things in there to punish Confederates. All right, so, you know, that's kind of what you would need to know for that. The 15th Amendment addresses black male suffrage. It says that someone cannot be denied the right to vote because of race, color, or previous condition of servitude. All right, so that's the 15th Amendment. Can't tell somebody they can't vote because of race, color, previous condition of servitude. Now, there are other reasons why you could still tell somebody that they couldn't vote, according to the Supreme Court at the time. But that is in 3.4, which we're going to take a look at in just a bit. So, see you then.